So uh, hi, my name is Julie Bofi, and I'm really happy today to be with you to talk about a real wonderful project I'm working on uh, since uh, two years approximately. Well, I began it like two years and a half ago. Uh, I will explain it to you. Uh, I will explain to you all that. Um, but um, still, it's like I'm very enthusiastic the, today to uh, to be there with you, and thank you from for coming. It's uh, more much appreciated. Right. So uh, I'm really happy because one uh, part of the presentation will be by what will be uh, done by uh, Karen Jacobs, who speaks English pretty well. <laughs> On most days, I speak English very well, and that's my first language, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it should be like more uh, efficient than me, and uh, I'm really happy because she'll uh, present you uh, her project of digital uh, the sequency, and it's wonderful the work she's made on it. So, the agenda today. Um, which should take approximately one hour. And if you have questions after all, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if you have them, meanwhile, no problem, but it's just because I have to, to give you an idea of the project first and uh, Corinne will do her part. And after that, if you want to just have a glimpse on uh, what the website uh, looks like, a glimpse because um, I had that, worst experience of a workshop where for about three hours someone was showing a, a website and I was like well I could have go there and click all by myself but the, the part the part that I want to to show you uh, today will be the the missing part <laughs> in a way because uh, I did my best to have everything you'll be able to see the big structure about it, but it's not complete. And anyway, um, I wanted a project where uh, collaboration and um, involving material, you know, I wanted something that could be more and more filled up with time. So we don't have like that kind of project where because it's not perfect, because it's not ready we never have it at all you know so and in a way if you want to participate after you be free to uh, to say to me hey i'm interested to uh, give you some help and i will be very pleased to say yes i accept so anyway that's the agenda um the origin of the project, uh, it was when um, the, the James, uh, Shish, I'm sorry, James Sheskapio Center uh, called us, it's uh, in the Nascapi community, uh, they uh, called us like uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, not, not exactly at the beginning, but maybe to like the, 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 the first new school year after. Uh, because their students, they had like eight students in age. Right now, they don't ha seem to have age at all in the Nescapia community. Um, but at that point, they had like eight students and they had like very poor um, digital competencies. Uh, and the, the problem was that the computer courses were like too low for where they were, they were in uh, sec four and five, and the computer courses that they should have taken uh, would have been three seconds sec one. So it was kind of difficult to give them credit for that. So we thought about it and we tried to do something else in a local course because uh, somehow each year, someone in the ministry seems to say that local courses will disappear sometime. And we didn't want to put like a lot of energy on a, a project that could be uh, just like living on a shell after all. So we tried to, to look at that demand different. 
And we ask ourselves, like, how do we truly engage students in their digital competency development? And we found that if we provide them a structure where they uh, have to use digital te technology, where uh, we could facilitate the integration, the inclusion, and the enhancement of their cultural identity, because uh, indigenous community for, uh, well, for which we, we, we are working uh, is uh, it, it's a, a real big um, I don't know how to how to phrase it but it's something that is very important to to develop with them and something that we we have really uh, um, a car so, okay we, we we really want to do that for them. So, um, and we wanted also to promote a tangible future use of their le learning. And because they are students and because their pay are usually the credits, we wanted to give them some credits. So, oh my God, okay. We, uh, we found that, I will put them all right away, that for the structure where to use digital, a digital portfolio would be like awesome because it's something that we want to use in uh, uh, adult ed for years, that, but that we don't use because we have never a way of giving credits for it for students. So that was like a, a, a wonderful way to to, uh, to work with a portfolio, a digital portfolio, and also to uh, give the opportunity to the students to develop their competencies, digital competencies. And then for the integration, the inclusion, and the cultural uh, enhancement, we thought about committing to success courses because there are so many things you can do with them. Um, you, can, uh, you can really work uh, with the student, um, the, the, the reflection on what is good for them and in what way, and for many, many cross-curricular competencies. So that was uh, wonderful for that. And tangible future use, because we wanted them to, to get as much as credits as possible, we say, okay, maybe that if we can take employability, which is also an issue for any student of adult ed, we could do like a sequency where um, we could give them like six credits for four of the success of the committing success course. And the, the course PRS uh, 51, uh, 72, uh, 70, choosing a career, which is two credits for. So we say, okay, with that and the portfolio, we could do something that would be great. Just to do a, a rapid uh, a glimpse to what is uh, committing to my success courses. Um, CSC courses, because we, we usually call them like that. CSC courses are really there to uh, develop uh, the, the, the reflection of the student about how he's learning, uh, what is the best for him when he tries to learn something. And because of it, it's like a, a, a real uh, um, a path where he sees everything that could be an issue for him when he's trying to uh, to to become to become a good citizen, you know, and to get into a professional uh, career. So at first, what the the first CST course is uh, is uh, looking at is to adjusting to an educational environment, uh, the preparation of the student. So the the, the center is kind of the the first step where the student is and in order to make him be able to continue uh, his scholarship the right way we try with that course to make him aware that there's a lot of resources around him that can help him. the second course is like the continuation of the first well in a certain way because now we we um, we ask the students to 
to think about his future. What does he want to, to get as a professional student, uh, future? So it's more about um, the real life situation uh, related to the preparation of a learning plan. Then on the third one, it's really about path to better learning, uh, how the student can increase his way of learning. And um, then you learn something, but you, you usually have to create something uh, somewhere in your life. So um, the fourth one is about uh, create, doing production. So, uh, and I, I see that I didn't translate that part. Um, and is um, it's where we showed the student what kind of steps he has to do in order to create something, to produce something. And the last one is about the assessment and about um, everything that goes with evaluation. And it's to permit to the students to um, be more aware of what can be a struggle in uh, evaluation time and how he can prepare himself in the best ways to be able to survive through his exam. So the first digital PED, PED sequency um, was approximately that. So we had like the four courses that we, uh, that we have uh, pointed out at that time. And uh, there, there was the, the one on the employability. It was an optional uh, courses, uh, an optional course, sorry. And we put it in a circle because as you probably know, indigenous community are really into um, circle, uh, circle uh, symbolization, if I can say that like that. And I understand pretty well why, because in this case, we can really see that the student is the art, the heart of the circles, you know. And I could do a course on 45 hours on what, why the circle is so interesting. Um, but, you know, you see that the community culture is also there. And we've named that first sequence becoming an asset to my community. So, the final evaluations of it were like, and it still is, that we want to have to respect the different DEDs there. You know, you can say because uh, a student uh, has, um, has reached, reached the goals of uh, a CST course that for the PRS 5170, it, it's, it has been done, you know, even though there's something about the reflection of the student that will touch both of them, okay? So the DDs has to be exactly the same as they should be, okay? Uh, we didn't want that the portfolio become um, uh, a way to evaluate the student because we wanted them to keep it. Because when you have like a, an employability vision of it, of the portfolio can be very interesting for future jobs, to, for, for future employer to, to see what the, the student have made in that uh, a kind of, of way. You know, it's like a, a cap de visite at one point where the student can say, you know what, that's or the goal that I re reached like for employability. And that's a reason a plus uh, that I have for, for um, if you compare me to others. So that was very in, uh, important for us. And uh, so the CST courses are more flexible for the evaluation. And we decided to do it like with an interview because it was the simplest way for us that students have the opportunity to talk about their portfolio without showing it. So they will do the work in the, the, the reflection part of the work in the portfolio, but what they have done will be the, 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 the content 
of what they'll talk about in the interview. And the interview is kind of something also that is less intimidated for the for the the the, the the student because he's all he's just talking to his the the, the teacher with whom he, he worked so it's easier for him to uh, to really take the time to position himself around all the questions that each CST courses are talking about and then PRS fifty one seventy course is still a regular evaluation as we, we know it. Current structure of the project, okay, because like I was saying before, the NSKP community don't have like an adult ed service anymore. Well, right now, probably in the future, but not right now, but not as I know. And uh, so we, we tried, well, we were a bit um, disappointed because it was a great project and it was like just going somewhere that it was very interesting to to play with and so we decided to see if we could use it for other community and at that point we realized that if we worked on the CST courses there was possibility to uh, have an infinite variation of thing of sequence because you can use them uh, with optional courses, but you can also uh, use them with main co courses. So it was like the perfect way to permit to the students to uh, enhance his cultural um, his cultural uh, identity, but also to develop his competency is the digital competency and is metacognitive competency also and it it was like providing to CST course some meat okay what I mean by that is that when you look at the five courses CST courses <clears throat> you realize that you can do about anything with them and the two first one uh, they're more easy to fill up because you have the what the first one is about the center where the the students is uh, is learning so you have like many things to tell him the second one is about professional so professional future so it's easier to to get um, uh, the counselor of orientation into the project and to uh, to give the students some documentation to read and some exam to do, you know, to see uh, what kind of job he could do. But the three last one, <clears throat> ones are more like, because you, you can do anything with them, it, it's sometimes difficult to, to really know what to do with them. So when you ask, for example, a student, what kind of learner are you? It, learner of what because I'm not the same learner I don't know for you but I'm not the same learner if I have to learn French that if I have to learn English or if I have to learn like math or and I and I was so awful when I had to learn how to um to drive a car uh for the the the, the exam the theor theoretical exam it was like really easy for me but it happens that I'm not in my body at all, okay? So I was like in the car and I was, anything I was doing was wrong. I, I, I didn't knew like, so I had to, to try some new ways of learning. So when you confront like another course with the, 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 the third one of the CST uh, courses, it's like, <clears throat> It's, it's easier for the students to position themselves about it. So, and the thing is that even though the credits are still for age, vocational training can also use, um, can also use the CST courses because, uh, for example, because the students don't have enough uh, optional credits uh, to uh, to to get this uh, diploma or to uh, 
that 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 be the example that comes to, into my mind right now. But anyway, there's uh, right now a, a table of consultation about how can, could we use uh, CST courses in vocational and give some vocational credit. So if you are in vocational and you're interesting to be on that table, just just let me know. Uh, it's Isabelle Busque from the ministry that is uh, uh, working on it, uh, actually. So I will make you uh, in touch with her. Uh, she'll be very happy. So anyway, we had like that a lot of opportunities with that sequences. And we said, OK, well, let's do a project with it. Um, so I did this one. What in a didactic angle the project is, is really like learning to learn, okay? So in one part, we have like executive functions uh, where we can uh, know better how to, um, how to work even when we think we can't, I will say it that way. And metacognition where you have to know more about the processes and the, the, the how to process a problem, uh, what will be the tools that you'll need to, to, to do it. And both of them are kind of connected together. And that's what we wanted to work with the students with that project. So <clears throat> the thing is that, at one point of the project, we, we were like, okay, that's great. Um, we know that we can use, for example, a math course with uh, the, the 5005 uh, CST course, put it together and make the, the student be able to reflect on how is better to prepare his evaluation for, uh, that, for that math course okay that's great but um how and that's when Danielle Lalonde came uh, into the project because first of all Vanessa Boilly and I weren't like the one that could do something about a math course um and the second of all he uh he was like the the, the sun in the gray sky when he arrived with his, uh, his idea of executive function, because it was like, oh, maybe that could be the, like the door, the, the, the first getaway get where the, the, the students can start the work. And we said like, oh yeah, that's wonderful. It's a wonderful idea. So at the first getaway is really executive function. And we realized by reading a lot about executive functions, uh, and I wanted to say um, that there's no one that is talking about executive function that is using exactly the same vocabulary, okay? They are all, they are all like working on the same kind of things, but sometimes it's split differently Sometimes like the vocabulary is the same, but you don't have exactly the same thing in each. So at what point we say, okay, fine, we'll do, we'll do it like how, the, the way we want to do it. And also we wanted to do it in a way where the students would not be like, oh no, not another theoretical like stuff that I have to learn and that is boring. So we tried to use really like cool vocabulary and a, a, a fun way to present those to the students. So you'll see when, uh, when you see the infographics and everything. And we realized that some of the, the, um, the people that were working on executive function put the stress management a management as an executive function, but for us, executive functions are more the way you can manage your stress because when you know them better, 
you realize that it's easier to put the stress away, you know, to be um, really in uh, really in charge of what you're doing. You know, you don't you don't get that impression that you're not uh, that you're powerless. So it's really like in the way we decided to do it. So the second gateway uh, is about CST courses and uh, the evaluation we decided to do, like I was saying, as uh, interviews. And the third one is the main courses. You can decide to choose main courses that could be like uh, optional or not. That could be like the, the, the one that the, the student has absolutely um, have to do to, to get the diploma. And those one are really be, be uh, evaluated. So executive functions, the way we, we, uh, we use it, and I <clears throat> just presented very quickly because you'll have the chance to, to see it more, uh, um, more uh, in more detail when you'll go on the website. Um, is uh, an infographic where there's not that much of word and on each infographic you have an avatar that is talking for about 60 to 90 seconds about the executive function. So it's usually like a, a, a definition that is very creative so the student can understand what it is then they they talk about a situation where they they had difficulty that they were struggling on something and after they talk about the solution they found for that uh, situation because for us it was easier for the students to position themselves by seeing by watching well by hearing someone else talking about his own struggling and that's why also um, it's not just like presenting those infographics to the students. We have also in the portfolio a place where the, the student has to, uh, to get through little scenarios where we present someone that is struggling with something. We ask the students to find uh, one or many executive functions that he thinks that could help the, the person and how he, he, he think he could help her. So in that way, the students more able to say, oh my God, you know what? That remind me of the time that I had problem because blah, blah, blah. And they will realize how executive functions are really cool, which I realize, I realize myself and I will talk about it later. A uh, second getaway, uh, it's on a CST course. So every CST course have its own infographic where you have uh, the program, the DED, uh, you have there uh, um, on the website, uh, you have there uh, an access to uh, uh, a drive where there's everything in it. And then if you want to just go by uh, each uh, category of action, you can go there, everything is identified. Um, you also have uh, in the little point there, uh, the example given in the program by the ministry of what could be that category of action. And the material uh, that is given is split in two type, activity that you can do that will be those that other center have tried or I've done and that are more like complete, if I can say it like that way. And you'll also have like one file where you have questions that are more general, but that concern that category of action that you can ask to the students to reflect on in this portfolio. And you will have an access on, um, um, of a um, uh, kind of toolbox, if I can say that like that, where we give some digital activities you can uh, propose to your students. So for example, uh, adapting to the requirements of a course of study, we could ask uh, uh, the student to make a, a quick research of what course he has to 
uh, to to get if he wanted to uh, finish for his diploma and ask him to do uh, an infographic with it uh, where everything would be there with uh, their the goal and the the goals the different goals he would reach and there there's so many things you can do with digital that it's kind of easy to make the students do an activity that you don't have to prepare at first. You just have to get the thematic, to, to get the, the question on what you want him to reflect and then give it the, 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 the how can I say that? Um, give it the, 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 the goal to do something, you know? It's just a, a, an exchange of idea at that point. You will also find everything about the final evaluation and uh, other resources that you could use. Uh, um, uh, could be, for example, uh, a scientific uh, documentation about something that is connected to the CST course that is in question. And your suggestion is exactly what I was telling, is that click on, you have an idea, you, you looked at what we had like in category one of action, for example, and by looking at it, say, oh, that question, I, I could like ask it differently in that way and propose to the students to do that, but without doing all the documentation, you know, you just have an idea. Well, you click on that and you go on the form and you just write the idea you had and you send it to me. And then once in a, uh, each month, I will do updates on the website. So everyone about, around Quebec will be able to give their, um, their idea, both in French and in English, from the community or not. And everyone will really collaborate in a way uh, of uh, making CST course more uh, rich. Uh, the main courses, I'm sorry, I know the infographic, I didn't have get the time to uh, to translate everything. It's really one something that I I um, that I'm uh, I deceive my, myself, but at one point I had to, uh, to 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 sleep at night. But anyway, everything will continue because it's an evolving uh, website, so I, I had to repeat that to myself a lot. Um, anyway, uh, P, P, uh, uh, PRI for PRS 5170, which is the same uh, SIGL, and um, you have like the main course where you you can uh, put it like that, that, like that. And I didn't translate that at all. You have the portfolio where uh, you can uh, deblock the reflection of the student and the, the digital competency. And what we decide to do is to create a Google site because Google site was the easiest way of sharing something with everyone. You have Google education, great. We don't have it, we don't mind. You just have to, to get a Google account. If you have a Gmail address, you have a Google account somewhere, you use Chrome, it's really easy. Um, and, we, and I found a way of not just like duplicate the portfolio, um, but give a, a, a really a template of the portfolio where the student just have to click on, uh, you know, create one copy and it all go into his Google Drive without other manipulation. So it's kind of easy to uh to take as a portfolio and i arranged myself to to put on that portfolio that template um because i was struggling with the thing that okay i can share that template to anyone but still if i have updates to put in the portfolio how can i do it you know in a way that even the students that have already uh, taking the template uh, could be able to to get the updates. So I uh, use Genially a lot, uh, like you'll see, to have the possibility to make updates too in the portfolio. So, and I don't want to, uh, 
I think that I will do it really quickly because the infographic and we are in French, but just to let you see approximately how it's going, uh, we took uh, math uh, 1101 and uh, last course of uh, CST uh, to make a digital pet sequencing. You're not in no, like I was telling before, you can, there's so many ways you can do that kind of sequency. You don't have necessarily the need of every CST course, which you can take if you want to, but it could be just one, just two, it's like you wish, okay? So there we have a, a, a scenario where uh, you, you, the, 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 the student is, um, how can I say that? You will read that that poor girl has struggling with uh, a problem, is struggling with uh, uh, the fact that she's always failing, you know, in math and in her life, she's always doing the same patterns and everything. And what the student can uh, propose to her is to um, is to work uh, her flexibility. I'm sorry for the French um, infographic. But anyway, flexibility, it's my <laughs> favorite one because when I was doing at first the infographic and I have it in English, I will, um, it, it's just because I didn't put, there, uh, put it there. But when I was working on the infographic, you know, the, the template of it, okay? Uh, all my little characters that are here uh, were all in the same place. And I, I, the, the last one I did, it was flexibility. And my problem was that all the other ones were done. And I had that little character that didn't want to get in the place that all other ones were. And I was like, I, don't tell me that I will have to do back all the work, you know, just for him. And then... I realized that I could put it aside and I was so laughing a lot because it was like, okay, I worked on my flexibility with my flexibility infographic. That was like awesome, you know? So you'll see when you, you work on executive function, the thing is that you, you, you became like more, you become like more aware of, you know, each time I'm losing the control, each time I am like uh, more grumpy, I'm like, okay, which of the <laughs> executive function I can use to be more happy with me, you know? And it works. Also, um, all the avatar, you know, I have like in French. And if you know people that like acting, okay, um, and want to record, okay, I need the... Um, uh, a particularly uh, a man or a young man to do like voices so if you know someone that is uh, 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 willing to do those um, well I asked my son to do the one in French and the thing is that as a mother I tried to give the 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 the, the one that I knew that he had to work on and he kind of computed well they're really good there are things like he did the, the recording at the beginning of summer and when he started school i saw a difference i know that maturity at that age is like 13 you know there's like something that can uh, that can change but i see like for example, flexibility. He was the one, the kind of a uh, uh, boy that didn't want to ask for for help from anyone. And right now, when he has problem, is more like, "Can you help me?" You see that he doesn't like that, but I think that there's something about the the, the, the executive function that works in his brain. So. 
if we come back to uh, the math and the CST course, a simple question because it's a financial math uh, course. So simple question and reflection before the exam that we could ask the, the student. And I assure you, uh, I assure you I, I'm telling you that is not Vanessa and I that came with those questions. We ask um, Martin Francoeur that you know probably uh, that is a, a math uh, consultant, very like uh, a dedicated student and is uh, from Renommé uh, around Quebec. <clears throat> so those questions are good for the, 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 the math. And how well do you know common vocabulary related to financial concepts? So we will try to work like metacognition and by giving like a math twist that is aligned with the course on what, well, the course um, that the students working on. So for example, how do you distinguish between a reduction and an increase? What is the difference between uh, um, a 15% reduction and a 15% increase? And that one, Martin uh, Francoeur told us that is somehow something that students struggling usually around Quebec. So, you know, there's, um, instead of giving a, a, a learning uh, situation or a complex task to the student that will bring him to realize that by asking him a question like where he has to, not to do like a, um, a, an equation or something, but to really think on how to make happen that re the equation it's helping him to understand more what he's doing. Uh, we also have a consultant in uh, CSSME. Uh, well, we had because now she's a uh, uh, um, she's uh, uh, somewhere else. But anyway, um, she's not a, a consultant anymore. Um, she, she she's made like empty exam math exam to help students, okay? MT because she was like taking off all the questions, but leaving the structures and asking the student to go uh, for the evaluation uh, in the evaluation room in order for him to be able to be more stressed out by the, the exam by seeing how structured it was. So we retake that idea and we say, okay, we could do the same for the last uh, CST course and ask directly on that copy uh, question that is, are aligned with CST 5005. Uh, so, and I think that, well, in that uh, particular course, there's a checklist that the, 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 the the student can do before the exam so you will be more aware of what he has to do and you, you can work with him like in another way and after what we decide for that sequence but it could be twisted in, in really really many ways we decided to um to really go after the exam and to do the interview about how it happened uh, but also, but always with the in mind that the student has to talk about every category of action. Okay, so that's the part that is really important. And don't forget that it's just 25 hours courses. So you can't ask the students to do like 100 hour on a project, even though you could say it could like help him. It's 25 hours, so it's, it's, it seems long, but it's quite quick. So there we could ask him, for example, uh, how did you manage your stress during the assessment? Uh, the, that's, what strategies learned in the CST course uh, did you use to complete your uh, Math 1101 exam, etc. So it gives like him the opportunity to talk about um, how it goes, even if he fell his exam, which we don't uh, wish him, 
but in a way, the importance of a CSD course is not that, uh, well, it's more about the reflection about the, the failure or the, the success of the, the students and not that he's successful in all what he tried to do. So do you have questions or comments before I leave Corinne Jacobs uh, talk about her project? We'll... So Tracy asked if she'll have, if we'll have an opportunity to explore the website today. Yeah, totally. So because like I was telling you uh, before, I don't want to be the one that will present it to you all. Uh, what I can tell you is that there's, a, like I was saying, there's a lot of thing that has to be translated. You, I'll, I'll, I let in French what I wasn't able to translate because I know that some of you are both, well, bilingual. And um, so you'll have uh, the chance. You can also go and see the French, uh, the French website if you want to. Uh, I just want before I leave the the the, the mic to uh, to Corinne, uh, just to let you know that on the executive function there. Uh, did it? I never had the chance to, well, I, I, I started, but I didn't finish to put all the infographic because I, I, I also always start with, um, with the Google uh, slide when I'm doing like my stuff at first. And so I share with you on the website for the moment, the, the, the Google slide I use to do the translation uh, for the, it was a, a real translator on those. And because the Voki, uh, the avatar doesn't speak English right now, I put the transcript, whoops, the English transcription of the Voki there, I let them there. So you can see approximately what kind of uh, thing the, 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 the avatar can say. But there's some parts that have been changed since I asked that infographic to be, well, that document to be, um, to be translated. So I also have to, uh, to remake those parts. So don't share that right away with your students. It's like it doesn't, uh, it won't work. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that I tried my best to give you like a good idea of what the guide will do. And, but um, I didn't get the chance to uh, translate the portfolio of the, the, the student yet, but I led it to you. So on the second one, take time to explore the folio yourself. When you click on it, you'll get the, the portfolio of the, the student. But what I can assure you is that one of my first priority for the translation is the portfolio. So it should be like next week that you'll uh, have an access to an English um, portfolio. So, but at least you'll see, and it's like kind of click on utiliser ce modèle, so you have access on it. So here we go, and I go back there. Do you want to uh, have the possibility to share your uh, own uh, your own screen, uh, Karen? Uh, no, that's okay, because I'm going to go in five minutes. So what I'm going to say um, is that when you go through the website, like I don't really need to talk too much about it because there's it's all there. <laughs> and all I'm going to say is that one of my the contribution that I brought to this project was I I was looking through one of the courses uh 51 oh it's it's supposed to be 5002 but that's just whatever oh my um, god my okay. learning plan Sorry. but that's okay um and I what I did is I just created lessons and activities that that could fulfill 
um, the course, but from that's that's approachable by indigenous communities. So uh, the videos that she put up that they put up on the website are really those are you know what I don't have to repeat myself as you're exploring, go listen to me talk there because we don't need to listen to me talk forever. Um, but the only thing that I wanted to say is that every every time I listen to uh, Julie talk about this, I start to understand it a little bit more each time what the whole project is about. And so if it if it feels confusing, I promise you'll get to it'll make more sense as time goes on. Because as I looked at what the, you know, the connections between basically the way that I filter it is I'm looking at the connections between helping students to develop their their digital tools, being able to use things, um, you know, their abilities, that digital literacy, preparing them to be able to be students in mainstream education whether that's vocational or um, academic. And then the angle that we're bringing it from for Indigenous communities about becoming an asset to the community is about giving back, right? It relates back to that, that relationality that everything that we do is for the people who come before us and after us. Um, and so when I created the section, which you can look through all of the activities and stuff that I made, it really was to to be able to achieve all of those things that we've talked about and that Julie is talking about, but to also offer that opportunity to decolonize it a little bit um, by by uh, acknowledging and also including indigenous ways of being and knowing, so that knowledge and that worldview. So that's that was my contribution. I don't. I honestly like there's a lot on this website so you know the opportunity to go through it to look through it do that and what I did is I put my email address into the chat because I'm you know one of the things that we've talked about is that this is and Julie has mentioned this is that if this is a collaborative site as an opportunity for people who are teaching things to be able to share it so that we can just go and take what we need when we're in our centers and so you know I created stuff. If you have questions or want to think with me or are not sure, or even just want to meet and have a conversation, you can send me an email and we can continue a conversation, right? Because webinars are a lot of people talking and then us taking information in. And sometimes I just want to talk about stuff because that's where like the real thinking starts to happen. Um, and so I'm leaving that door open. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. That's, that's just me. That's it. That's what I've got for you. Thank you, Corinne. It's such a pleasure to, to have the opportunity to work with you. <laughs> I can assure you that I learned a lot with you, not only English, <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. And um, I, will, uh, I will add to that, um, that I just, you know, in the second um, video, you Corinne is very explaining that um, that seven generations philosophy and it's so how can I say that I, I like it a lot I well I love it it's kind of it's something that is really simple when you you when you see it but that we don't think about at first okay well for me, it was like, oh, yeah, I love that. You look back, you look forward, and then you look at you at that moment. And it's not like the way we usually see those kind of things. So take the time to go and listen and watch uh, Corinne, uh, uh, the her vision of the project. And also, I can say that if you click on the notification of a base, you'll have a little form um so I'll be able to uh, to send you uh, every time, not every time that I change a little thing, okay? I won't bother you like 15 times a day. But what I can tell you is that there will always be a date there where the updates will be. And I also be able with that form to, um, to send you uh, emails each uh, each month that's that's the the minimum I, I i'm i want to do you know to have like i i already put in my calendar like one day completely um for each month where i'm uh taking everything that people send me 
and that I put back on the the website or uh, <clears throat> to be able to go and uh, work on what is missing. But like I was telling you, yes, there's a lot of that is missing right now. Also in the French website, you'll see that all about the, um, the steps that you have to follow. It's not there. Uh, for that part, uh, the thing was that on Sunday, I did all my recording. And then when I wanted to do my uh, montage, I... Um, I, I realized that my that I had problem with my mix, so the 20th cast video I did weren't good at all. So I have to do all the vocal caption after, and uh, so it will uh, take me uh, a little more time. But anyway, everything will be in a way where the student uh, will have access to. Uh, um, to uh, procedures that explain him step by step what he has to do, and also um, a video where he can see what he has to do. Uh, I would also uh, like to ask that if you're a, a VC uh, consultant and you want to uh, give me a, a hello about. Uh, uh, a tutorial that you find very, very interesting uh, about anything that can use the student for his portfolio, I'll take it, you know, because <laughs> I, I, I already have like a little bank where I, I didn't take the time yet to put it in English. I have one, some in French, but it's not, because I don't want to you know, it's a collaborative website, and I know that um, a lot of VC have made stuff and or know already about tutorial of other, and so um, and I want I want that website to be collaborative. For right now, it's a lot of what we've done, like in little 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 committee, but I want to extend it so. And there's no bad ideas and there's no bad stuff. I just want to, to get someone, some, a place or an organized place because that was one of my uh, main matter too, that it was easy to use, but easy to find stuff on the, the website. So, and, and if there's anyone that have comments after looking at it, don't hesitate to uh, email me or uh, taking the form to inform me of something. I'm, I, 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 I want to, uh, to, to know from everyone what they talk about it. And so that's it. Do you have someone, uh, Giovanna? It's just me. I just wanted to say, I think that it's, um, uh, you know, it, it really supports uh, building the digital competency. I think this is a wonderful initiative, a very comprehensive package that could be, you know, leveraged um, in, in many, not only for the First Nations and Inuit community, but anyone willing to, like, that, that would need to have the students um, work on their executive functions, help them to increase the number of options that they need to, to fulfill their, you know, the, the, the recommended uh, options that they need to complete. I think that this is a wonderful initiative and very, uh, I'm very happy that you're doing it. I'm very proud of this. Thank you. And I'm happy that you're happy because you'll work with I'll be me working on it. On it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a great initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I, when I, I first started to, um, to get a, a national mandate kind of job, you know, it was with the CAFO FGA, and I had that goal to, to get a project where very, everyone could be like collaborating all together. So I'm really pleased that that come up. And I'm also pleased because, you know, indigenous community will um, 
I think they, they will be kind of a leader in that kind of project because for me, Indigenous pedagogy is the absolute answer to the, the new programs uh, because where we are in um, performance, they are really on the success of the goals you have put on your path. And it's, it's more a matter of just, you know, developing the competencies for real and not having the greatest. They don't care. Yeah, it's not about the grades. It's not no, about grades. the product. Yeah, it's you. about the process. Yeah, exactly. It's really about the development of the competency rather than the end goal of uh -huh. what is the grade. Yeah. Exactly. And I like the fact that, you know, French and, and the Francophone and Anglophone will be really able to collaborate. And I, I, that's why I'm so... Uh, I, I would have been so happy to have everything translated today because, uh, you know, we, we, you can heard that French is my first language, <laughs> but for me, the important still is the student, you know, whatever the language is talking. And I think that it's very important that we have more and more projects that put every student really into the heart of the project.